Hey guys, in my last video, I made a list of the strongest comps you could play in the current meta, which is honestly still pretty relevant, but I realized that I didn't touch up on how to get to these late game comps in the first place. In this video, I'm going to talk about some of the strongest early game boards you could play to flex into both the AD comps and the AP comps. For the AD comps, it's relatively simple. You literally just play strongest board until level 8, and then you flip your whole board into either Yone carry or Lot carry or Jin carry. So I won't spend too much time into this. I think the more interesting part of the video will be the AP early game boards, because a lot of the time you can't just play strongest board to get to these AP boards, because these boards are so expensive that you need a very, very high econ opener to play into them. Hopefully after this video, you'll get some clarity on how to transition into both the AD and the AP boards. So one of the most common ways you could get to the AD flex boards is by using the innovator opener i would only play the innovator opener if you get two star singe and two star ezreal early otherwise your board is just too weak but let's say you do happen to hit a two star ezreal and two star singe you could just commit onto the three innovator opener and the three core units would be singe ezreal and zillion so if you're playing ezreal you always want a second scrap unit so you just play blitz and then you also want a second bodyguard so you could just play something like poppy and to round out your synergies because you're playing zillion you could just play camille for two clockwork of course there are many different variations to this for example, um, you could also play four scrap. So you could drop Poppy and Camille and you could play Echo and Ziggs. This gives you three innovator and four scrap and you can just put one random component on your Blitz, Echo and Ezreal to get five full items. You could also get three Yodels in in the innovator opener if you wanted to. So let's say you could drop Zillion and Echo. Instead, you could just play Heimer and Poppy. This gives you three scrap, three Yordle, two bodyguard and three innovators. And the perfect level seven unit would be Janna because this gives you four scrap and Scholar. For the innovator early game, you just follow the standard leveling pattern. You want all your tank items on your Singed and all your carry items on your Ezreal. And then at level 8, you just flip your whole board into an AD board, Yone, Urgot, or Jin, whatever you hit. Another way you could get to the AD late game flex boards is through Tristana. Because Tristana is a Yordle, it's very easy to play through Yordles early game to hit level 8 a lot faster than the entire lobby. So your level 3 board is just going to be Poppy, Tristana, and Lulu. And because you're playing Poppy, you want a second bodyguard, so you play Blitz. And then because you're playing Tristana, you want a second sniper. So it's most likely going to be Caitlyn. So there are two main variations to Tristana carry early game. Uh, I would say that one variation is going to be playing around four bodyguard, in which case you're just going to be playing Darius and Leona. And then the other variation would be playing Enchanters instead of four bodyguard. So in this case, you could probably just drop Darius. You could drop Blitz and you could drop Ziggs. Uh, in this case, you're just probably going to play Lulu. And then because you're playing Lulu, you want Tarek as a second enchanter. And then next, you could probably slot in Jenna. Because you're playing Tristana and you have three Yodos early game, you could get to eight a lot faster than the entire lobby. So you could adjust your leveling pattern accordingly to be a bit more aggressive. Notice that you could probably get to level eight on four or five. And you're putting all your tank items on either Darius or Poppy, whoever you two star, and all your carry items onto Tristana. Because your frontline is bodyguards, your frontline is a little bit more established to play around Jin because Tristana was originally a sniper. So I would say that 80% of the time it's going to be a Jin pivot, but if you're rich, you could pivot into Yone or Urgot if you don't hit Jin. So another way you could get to the level 8 AZ boards is through Trundle. Um, if you're playing Trundle, you almost always play four bruiser. So the four bruisers are just going to be Alawi, Trundle, Vi, and Zac. And because you're playing Scrap, you want to scrap the third item on him. So you just play an Echo. And then if you're playing Echo, you could just play a second Assassin like Talon for some extra backline damage. And this is a very strong board that could usually get you to level eight with a lot of HP. There is another variation to this in which you play four Scrap. So let's say you drop Talon and then you could just play something like Janna and Blitz. In this case, you want to scrap the items on Blitz, Trundle, and Echo. And one other variation you could play without the four bruisers is three Chemtech instead. So you could probably drop your scrap units. So let's drop Janna and Blitz. And let's play the Chemtech units. So it's probably going to be Zac and Mundo. And your third Chemtech could be Lissandra. And Lissandra is an insane unit to hold Morello. For your leveling pattern, uh, it's going to be an 8 on 4 or 5. Sometimes, if you're windstreaking the whole game, if you hit 2-star Trundle, you could actually even go 8 on 4 or 2. If you're playing Trundle Carry, there might be some games where you might not have 2-star Trundle on stage 3-2 or 4-1, where you're level 6 or 7. In that case, it might be smart to roll down until you hit 2-star Trundle to stabilize, or else you're going to bleed out too much HP before going 8. Your tank items will just go on the first 2-star tank you hit, which is probably Alawi, Zac, or Vi. And again, all the carry items will go to Trundle. Same story, you transition your whole board at level 8. I would say that 
most of the time it's an ergot pivot because your front line is already an established ergot front line but if you don't manage to hit any ergots you could pivot this into Jin or yone but i would say that it's a little bit more expensive to do that so you could only do that with high econ so the last early game board that comes to mind is going to be Samira. Sometimes you might get a Samira from your early game orb, and if you already have AD items, you could probably just play Samira carry until you go 8, and then you flip your whole board. If you're playing Samira, the two other core units are going to be Camille and Zillion. So at level 5, there are going to be a few different variations you could play. Uh, one variation is going to be playing 3 Imperial. In which case you're just playing Swain and Talon, and you're just going to stack Swain with all your tank items. The other variation is going to be 4 Challenger. So in this case, you're just playing Quinn and Warwick. But I would say that at level 7, you almost always want to play 4 Challenger and 3 Imperial. Because you're playing, I would say, more expensive units early, like Samira, Zillion, and Warwick, your Econ isn't going to be as good. So you're most likely only going to be able to go 8 at, by stage 5-1. And I would say that most of the time, it's probably going to be a Yone pivot, because again, your board is already established to be a Challenger frontline. It's pretty expensive to pivot this into Jin or Urgot. All your tank items are going to go on Swain and Camille, and your carry items will go on Samira. So now I finished going through all the early game boards for the AZ flex boards. Now I'll talk more about the more complicated early game boards for AP. So there are three ways you could play into the AP flex board. Uh, the first way is a win streak opener, which is honestly very, very difficult. This almost never happens. The second way is if you get an econ opener. Uh, this could be if you get something like rich get richer early or calculated loss or if you get three yordles. And the third way is through mercenaries. So I'll just briefly run through one variation of a very strong early game AP board you could play. I think the only way you could win streak with an AP early game board is through Malzahar. The only item he really needs is Archangels and a very good frontline. So there are a few different variations you can play with Malzahar. Uh, you could play four bodyguard. Bodyguards are going to be Darius, Poppy, Blitz, and Leona. And then if you're playing four bodyguard, it's super easy to play um, three Yordles. So it's just going to be Ziggs and Lulu. You could also not play four bodyguard. You could play um, two enchanters instead. So in this case, you could probably drop Darius and Leona for uh, Tarek and Jen. You could also play for Arcanists, uh, but for Arcanists only work if you have a two-star Swain or Vex. So let's say you hit like a Swain 2 early, then you could proceed to play around for Arcanists. So the two other Arcanists would probably be Ziggs and Vex. And then you probably round out your synergies with Scrap and Yordle. So I don't know, a good Yordle is probably something like Heimer. And the sixth unit could probably be Jenna because it gives you Scrap and Scholar. So if you get any variation of these boards, and you get a Malzahar early, you could win streak until level 8 and then flip your board into the AP flex board. And your tank items will go on Swain, Vex, Darius, and your carry items will go on Malzahar. But I would say that win streaking with an AP board is very, very uncommon in the current meta, unless you high roll. So now I will talk more about the Econ openers and the Mercenary openers to pivot your board into an AP flex board. So one Econ opener is if you get three Yordles early, uh, the three most common Yordles you could get are Poppy, Lulu, and Ziggs. So if you get the Sun 2-1 and you have components for tank items and AP items, you could probably look towards playing the AP Flex board. And when you're playing this opener, uh, your Econ management is extremely important. The units don't matter that much. What's important is that you manage your Econ properly. When you're playing the three Yordle opener, um, you almost always want to prioritize making the 10 gold interval as opposed to two starring your three Yordles. So for example, let's say you're playing three Yordles and then you get dropped the Lulu. You never make the Lulu too early because making the Lulu too will cost way too much money due to compound interest. And your leveling pattern for playing the three Yordle opener is going to be 2-1 um, level 3. You should be at 10 gold. And then at 2-4, you should be level 4. You should already be at 30 gold here. And then at 2-5, you're still level 4, but you should be at 40 gold. And then 2-6, you should be at 50 gold. And you probably level to 6 at 3-2. And at this point, you should most likely be at 40 gold. And you could actually go level 7 at 3-5. Again, you should be 30 or 40 gold. And then you actually want to spike at 4-2 and roll down. In which case, you should have 30 gold to roll down at level 8 because you have played Yordle the entire game and you lost streaked until stage 3-2. At this point, you need to roll down for your AP flex board and one copy of either Kaisa, Victor, or Akali to stabilize you. As for your board, it'll most likely progress like this. So you're probably playing Blitz uh, to round out your synergies with Scrap and Bodyguard, and you probably only need Archangels on Ziggs to win fights. The rest of the items you need are going to be tank items. So again, um, both Blitz and Darius could work. For example, if you two-star your Darius, you want to stack all your tank items on your Darius, 
your win con for your fights is living as long as possible because you have archangels on zigs and then later on um as the game proceeds at stage 32 after you're done loose streaking once you get four bodyguard in you could actually start winning fights so once you get leona and blitz in your board's actually pretty damn strong Another variation you could play that's not for a bodyguard is to play um, Enchanters instead. So you could probably play Taric and you could drop the Darius. Eventually, once you get a Malzahar, you want to swap out the Ziggs to play Malzahar instead and play a third Yordle. Because Ziggs is only decent early game, he eventually is going to scale off. So uh, you probably just get a replacement Ziggs from the Yordle trait and then you do something like this. And then eventually you could probably slot out uh, Blitzcrank for Janna and then your board is actually looking pretty good. Sometimes when you're playing um, the Yordle opener and you're loose streaking, at level 6 or 7 you might be really unlucky and your board might still be too weak. In which case you need to make the decision to roll down 10 or 20 gold at stage 3-2 or 3-5 to power spike you a little bit. Or else you won't even get to level 8 at this stage. You'll just die. Going back to um, the early game example, you don't have to lose streak. Uh, this is only assuming you're ultra low rolling your early game and you only have one star Ziggs, Poppy, Lulu the whole game and your items are terrible. If you get um, two star Poppy and Ziggs early and you hit two star Darius, you could actually just go level four on stage two one with zero gold and just try and win streak. Because if you have two star Darius, he alone could carry you all the way until stage three two. And um, instead of playing loose streak Yordles, you could just play tempo Yordles. And you just play your strongest board and generate an extra 2 gold every turn from Yordles. And you could still be on track to go level 8 on 4-2. So finally, I'm going to talk about the Mercenary Opener and how you could play the Mercenary Opener into the AP Flex board. The units generally don't matter too much for Mercenaries, but I'll just briefly run over them. So for example, if you're playing Alawi, you could just play a Vi. And then if you're playing a Sniper, it's just going to be Caitlyn. I want to reiterate again that the units don't matter too much. The most important part of playing mercenaries is managing your econ and your loss streak. So this is going to be your leveling pattern. You basically want to lose streak all the way until stage 3-5, at which point you could go level 7 with 30 or 40 gold to roll. And here you want to roll all the way down to 10 or 0 gold to cash out, and you should be around 30 HP. You might be wondering how you could cash out at level 7. Uh, it actually turns out that Misfortune is one of the best item holders for the AP flex boards, which is just GA and... um. Archangels, so that makes it a lot easier. The two most common ways to cash out with mercenaries with an AP comp is cashing out with Misfortune. Uh, here you have four bruisers and your three items are just going to be these items you put on Kaisa. So at level seven, you're gonna be 30 HP. You need to roll down to two star everything on this board, especially a frontline and two star Misfortune. Uh, but let's say you don't hit the Misfortune. You could also cash out with these items on Lissandra instead. So for example, here you're playing four bruisers with three Chemtech. You don't have a misfortune, but if you hit two star Lissandra, you could still cash out with Lissandra. And then from that point, uh, once you cash out, you probably get like 50 or 60 gold and some Nikos and some legendaries. And then at 4-2, you go level 8 and then roll down to 0 to stabilize. And then you'll be on track to go level 9 on 5-5, five five, in which case you just win from there. Since I'm already talking about how to play into the AP flex board for mercenaries, I might as well talk about how you could cash out with AD items as well because sometimes you're going to be playing mercenaries into Urgot, Jin, or Yone. So at level seven, again, when you roll down, you could cash out with two star Gangplank with these items and a four bruiser frontline. You could also cash out with a uh, two star Trundle if you don't have Gangplank. Uh, if you're playing Trundle, you can run a second scrap unit like Echo and Echo makes your board super strong because you could hold Morello. Additionally, um, you could also cash out if you hit one copy of Jin. You wanna play a second sniper like Misfortune and this board, as long as you're Frontline is two star, you could probably cash out. And finally, you could also cash out with Samira because Quinn happens to be a challenger. You could play for a challenger with a challenger frontline. And if you two star Samira, it's an easy cash out. So this basically wraps up my early game guide. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and comment down below and subscribe to my channel. And if you're interested in the comps I talked about here, you could just check my last video as a reference to this video and see what units you need after you transition. Merry Christmas, and I'll see you all next time.